in line with Him, the more we cooperate with Him. The less we think like Him, the less we can receive of what He's made ours. We need to come into His way of thinking. And that's what the renewed mind does. It lays down our own human, natural, carnal way of thinking to take on His higher way of thinking. And so as we think right, then we can flow and cooperate with Him in such a way that we can easily and freely receive all that He's already made ours. ultimate success as believers will be based on our personal agreement with the Father and His Word. There's no end in Him, and there's no quit in Him. He meets you at the point of your faith. God's only got one package for His kids, the best in every area of our life, just the best. That's all He possesses is the best. His design is that you walk in wholeness all the days of your life. I think if we pay more attention to what He's already done, we'd finally figure out, my gosh, I've won. God's Word is not designed to try and talk somebody out of doing what they're going to do. It's designed to impregnate us with an understanding of what's already done. And so each of us are going to find our own level, and each of us will enjoy the level that we rise to. in my hotel room. God's dispatching more angels to 
this local church for the purpose of miracle power. I tell you something is happening in Hawkins, New Mexico right now. I can see it right now. It's happening. This is a miracle taking place. They're from Hawkins, New Mexico. There's a miracle happening. There's a miracle happening in Hawkins.
the great Lord, for the things you've done, I come to you, giving all my eyes for the day you've made. You're amazing, forever reigning, my God.
Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in church tonight? Praise the Lord. So good to see you. We're excited that you're here. If you are here with us for the very first time, welcome to Choose Life Church. Let's give our first time guests a great big round of applause. Such an honor for us to have you here with us. We'd love for the opportunity to connect with you. We have two connect centers out in the lobby. We'd love for you to stop by at the end of service tonight. And then also, if you're with us online, thank you for being with us. Let's give them a great big round of applause as well. It's going to be a great night tonight. I want to invite you to just go ahead and be seated tonight. We've got a little something special. I want to invite the one and only Omar Arona and the other one and only Marla Grinko. Come forth. Here they come. Take it away. Hi, y'all. We can invite them up, please. Yes, Pastor Dina Kathy, come on up here. We got a little something, something for you. For those of you that don't know, as they come, Marla Grinko is one of the smartest people in the entire world. And we are so blessed to have her, not just at Kid City Daycare, but the Choose Life Co-op. Come on up, Pastor. So this might not be as important to y'all as it is to us. And we're very excited and we're very emotional. We had a surprise today. So we had a surprise inspection today. And we want to present this to you. Hey, guys. hallelujah! <laughs> and it's. We, Woo! Lexi, take a photo. Here we go. Yay. Hallelujah. Pastor, you have any words? We like, we like the uh, block here that says permanent. Permanent. With a, with a big red check mark. So, praise God. So there and was a lot of stuff and a lot of things, and you guys may not know or don't know, but with a lot of prayer, a lot of finances, a lot of finances, a lot of tears, yeah. a lot of frustration, a lot of thank God the whole entire time. Two years they've been trying to announce to you all, we're going to get this done, we're going to get this done, we're going to get this done. And well. today, for the first time, thank God, they came, they showed up at the last minute. Omar's like, they're here, they're all here. Let's, you know. Everybody showed up at one time. At one, at one time. time. We weren't expecting well, it. That's good. And we are official, so now it's just a little it's bit. It's all over but the shouting now. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Well, we're. You know, we were in um, Dallas, I believe, yeah. when yeah. we got the call about their certificate of o occupancy. Excuse for, me. For this and, building. For this building. And we were at a Starbucks. And. We rejoice. Don't be telling off on me. I fell to my knees and yeah. began to cry. Basically, like Dad baby. started I mean, crying. You know. It's been this way all day. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Omar and I. That was the thing we both recognized is that we were here and we were the ones that were able to give you that at that time too. Both Praise of us. Praise God. Praise so God. It was really special for us. And well, so this is so special. We waited. But these two, yeah, they've. I mean, they've, they've been it. tremendously. They've worked their butts off. Yeah, literally. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm still there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're so so grateful for their diligence to Amen. handle all that stuff. And I just kept saying, I don't care what it costs. Yeah. Just get her done. Get her done. And so. I haven't even looked at that, no, but if you would like to contribute. <laughs> I'm serious. I have POs galore and receipts galore. You guys just have no earthly clue what it has taken to be able to get this to come to fruition. It yeah. is such a gift from a our pastors deal. for the co-op and for us as an annex. And we're going to be able to utilize this building for a lot of different stuff. And I know there's just been a lot of speculation about everything. But they know the truth. We know the truth. Oh, yeah. And it is a huge, huge weight off of all of our shoulders. Amen. Yes. Amen. 
Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. I think if, I think, because amen. Without him, it would have not worked. Oh, that's exactly it right. It would have not worked. And without Nothing your works. support amen. and continued support, um, we're going to get it completely paid for, completely done, and it looks absolutely yeah, it's amazing. wonderful. Amazing facility. Wonderful, an amazing facility, and these kids are going to have a place to go, a clean place, a nice place. They're not going to have to come to church the same in the same building that they go to school. And, and we've got some great kids signed up for the fall, and classes start. The 22nd. The 22nd. The 22nd. So we rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Exactly. And you won't have to be concerned. Those of you whose uh, uh, students are going to be going there, you won't have to be concerned about literature or things being said or done that uh, compromise uh, how God set things up uh, and how God intended them to continue until His Son returns. So... Uh, it's a it's a huge deal to ha to have this opportunity. You know, there have been church schools, uh, EDU. This is kind of a new thing, but the reason the reason we wanted to do it this way is because you know it's always been God's plan that uh, that the parents be involved with the raising of the children. And you know, even even though I, I didn't realize what was going on over the last uh, maybe 50, 60 decades. I mean, five or ten decades. Uh, it's easy to it's easy to figure out now that uh, um, their their plan was not healthy, and uh, uh, there's going to be more and more of it uh, that's going to transpire. So you know, those that uh, are able to do that, and those of you that will be able to do that uh, in the future, I would encourage you to uh, do whatever it takes to uh, put your put your children in a place where uh, they can grow and you can grow also. Because yes. it works. It's, this is a family deal, actually. Yes. And so, anyway, we're excited. This is a big deal here, right here. You guys, so you guys have been, you know, kind of just day. right on the edge of not telling the truth all day, haven't you? <laughs> huh? I mean. I wondered what y'all were up here for. Like, what are they doing? I know. What are they going to say? I mean, you know. So, anyway, did you want to keep this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> What a pre pleasant surprise. Amen. It's a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good. Well, praise God. You may be seated. Praise God for Pastors Dean and Kathy, you know. Pastor Dean walked in that building years and years and years ago. And he had a vision for that place being filled with those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And look what the Lord has done. Look how the Lord has uh, continued to be faithful and to increase us and uh, to help us to renovate this building debt-free. The Lord is good. So we're so thankful, so thankful for all that Omar's done over there and John and Marla. I know John put in a lot of work. And really, Marla, we're going to figure out a way to... Um, be great if we could just bottle up uh, her work ethic and her skill but honestly we're going to find out a way for her to impart that to the students and obviously if you're a part of, of her generation you understand that work ethic um, and it's just so amazing to see because it's like nothing is too big she doesn't get bogged down she doesn't get overwhelmed and, and there's a lot of details and there's a lot of challenges and sometimes people say they're going to come and they don't come and there's just so much to it uh, but we're going to figure out a way for her to be able to impart that to those students over there because she's 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 phenomenal. We, she, she did it with the Kid City Daycare and got it all up and running and it's all uh, in, in line with all the state regulations and no big deal. And then we said, hey, you did so great on that. How would you, how would you like to help us with this school? And she's phenomenal. So we're just so thankful, obviously thankful to the Lord. He's the one that gives us the strength that we have the mind of Christ, right? We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So um, great things happening here at church. We want to give you a few announcements, actually quite a few announcements. Let me not say a few. Let me say quite a few. That's why I let you be seated. So let's start off with late night happening tonight at 930. This is for 18 to 30 year olds in the lobby. We have a great time. We encourage you to come and be a part of it. Uh, we have a great service. We have praise and worship. It's awesome. And we would love for you to be there and be a part of it. Also, Deep registration ends this Sunday. Let's take a look at this deep ad.
Hallelujah. Live under so you can reign over. Hallelujah. We're under authority and we reign over the enemy. We want you to be a part of that. We encourage people all the time to continue to dig deep and we'd love for you to be a part. It will absolutely change your life. It will build such a strong foundation on the doctrine that we find only in God's word. Hallelujah. Also, single life. This is a big deal coming up Friday. Let's take a look at this ad. Friday, 7 p.m. Doors open at 6. It's going to be amazing. Pastor Faith is so anointed. She's funny, she's powerful, and she's anointed. We encourage you to come and be a part of that. Uh, if you're single, you should be here. Let me say that again. If you're single, you should be here. Uh, it, it is such a powerful ministry, uh, and we'd love for you to come and be a part of it. We love it. We have a great time. We'd love for you to be here. It will be available for those of you with us remotely. It will be available on the live stream. Also, water baptism will be taking place next week right after the midweek service. If you've never been water baptized, man, we would love for you to be a part of that here at Choose Life Church. It's an outward expression of what happened when you made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. We were crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, we're, we, we, in him we live, right? We were raised with him. We're now seated at the right hand of the Father. The old us is dead and gone. Hallelujah. And we're raised to life in Christ. So we'd love for you to be a part of that. You can get signed up for that on the Choose Life Church app. And if technology is not your thing, we have people out there at the kiosk that would love to tell you uh, and get you signed up for that. So that's going to be amazing. Also, let's take a look at the fifth quarter ad. <laughs> going to be amazing and you can be a part of it. I was looking through some pictures that were sent to me from when we used to do it years and years ago and I was like amazed. It was like there was a lot of kids there and so I just started getting so stirred up and it's going to be awesome. We're going to shift it to the south a little bit because our new school has proper handicap poles out front and we do not want to disturb those in any way uh, but it's going to be amazing. So it's going to be right there in the parking lot. We're going to set up ropes and, and have a, a secure area where only 6th through 12th graders can come in and we're going to facilitate different games and things like that. Obviously you can give towards that through RNA on the app. That's restoration and acceleration. Um, that's going to be our outreach this fall. We're going to be reaching into the community. And really, as I saw how many young people were there, I thought, wow, what an amazing opportunity to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ um, to the next generation. So it's just going to be awesome. They have lots and lots of fun. You can be a part of it. Sign up to be a part of Fifth Quarter on the Choose Life Church app. Also, if you haven't downloaded the app, it's absolutely free. But not only download it, enable push notifications, you'll get an encouraging word from us every single day. If you are new to town, maybe uh, you, you just moved to Hobbs, or maybe you got some other new in your life, a new baby, newly married, new apartment, new house, stop by one of the Connect Centers. Let us know about the new in your life. We want to celebrate that. We'd like to give you a gift. But if you've been newly diagnosed, we want to put a packet of resources in your hands. It's filled with God's Word, and God's Word is life and health and medicine to all of our flesh. And how do we take it? We take it by speaking it. Hallelujah. So it's not just in our heart. It has to also be in our mouth. So we want to put those resources in your hand so that you can put God's word to work in your life. If you are with us online, if you've been newly diagnosed, the exact same thing. Just click the link in the description. We'd be honored to send you those resources absolutely free of charge. If you are here today in need of food, just stop by either of the Connect Centers. Just mention a bag of food. No questions asked. We'd be honored to partner with you in that way. And then last night we had our outreach night that takes place on Tuesday night and on Thursday night at 6 p.m. Last night we had 106 salvations. Four people received their healing, 174 invites and 218 total encounters. Uh, it starts tomorrow night at 6 p.m. The way it works, you go straight ahead in the lobby, you'll see the youth room. You'll spend some time praying in the Holy Ghost and just getting ready and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit begins to speak to different people and one person sees this location and the other person they see a pink shirt or whatever and all of a sudden these people get together and they're like, wow. The person that we saw in our spirit was there. And it's just so amazing how supernatural it is. And you can be a part of that. And don't be intimidated. Don't be like, well, I, I barely even know how to pray. It's fine. Just go and just pray and just be a part and jump in and be bold and watch what the Lord does in your life. You can be a part of that. It would be a great blessing to you. 
Tonight we do have the Why Holy Spirit class. Come on, somebody. Anybody in here receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. We've been endued with power from on high. And the Bible has a lot to say about the personal Holy Spirit. Uh, we are not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and we're, we don't downplay the Holy Spirit in any way. We don't, we don't like low-key put it in some fine print at the bottom of an announcement card. And if you happen to stumble upon it, then you could happen to go. No. From the stage, we say the person of the Holy Spirit is vitally important for your success as a believer. We're unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and everything that it teaches us. So I encourage you, maybe you've already received the infilling of the Holy Spirit or maybe you haven't received your prayer language or maybe you'd like to be a little bit more bold in sharing what the Bible says about the person of the Holy Spirit I encourage you dismiss yourself right now um, to that class so everybody stand up I'm gonna have you greet those around you if you'd like to go to the white Holy Spirit class Pastor Kathy will be in there with you it's straight through those double doors right back there everybody else greet those around you and then you may be seated Praise God. Great to see you tonight. I tell you, that's real exciting. Everything, everything that really that uh, God has us get, uh, get involved in is exciting. Uh, we're excited that uh, there are so many people that, uh, that actually realize uh, uh, what's available here. Uh, we've known what's available here ever since we began. Uh, obviously, more things have become available. You know, as you continue to grow and people uh, buy into God's plan, and into the truth of his word, then uh, uh, you're able to do more and more and more. And uh, it's really not a bur burden for anybody. Those that get involved uh, can get involved because uh, they have with the wherewithal to get involved. And so, you know, that's why we've been able to do what, uh, what we've been able to do. Uh, that's why the uh, renovation of this facility, the purchase of it, the renovation of it, the same thing with 810. Uh, we haven't, uh, haven't, nor would we, borrow money to do that. Uh, you know, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think it's a sin to borrow money, but God's got a way for us to uh, be able to live without borrowing money. That's, I mean, that's plan A. And, uh, and honestly, the only thing that stands between most people uh, living like that and, uh, uh, and just living a life, uh, you know, from paycheck to paycheck is, first of all, not, not believing that it's possible. Not believing that it's possible. And then realizing that you work with the Father as it pertains to your stewardship so that you keep yourself in a position where you can flourish. And then obviously you give, uh, as we think about uh, uh, giving tonight, think about Luke 6.38, how huge it is, uh, where Jesus said, Give, and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give back to you. He said, for the measure that you meet with all. In other words, everything that you give, the measure you use to give with. In other words, the amount. Not everybody starts with a lot. Obviously, they could start and should start with the tithe because that's not theirs anyway. I said, that's not theirs anyway. The Bible says that the tithe is the Lord's. It's still the Lord's. And the only reason he set it up like that is so that for those that did it, he could assure them of special protection and provision. But he said, it can come back good measure, pressed down, 
shaken together and running over shall men give back to you. And again, with the measure you meet with all, it will be measured back to you. So in other words, if you're a tight giver, huh? Yeah, come on. it's going to be a slight amount that comes back. Now, there shouldn't be anybody to get upset about that, but, but you, because you're the one who is setting a raise in motion. You're the one that's doing that. I mean, if you believe God, then you are the one that's setting a raise in motion. And I was thinking about it just a few minutes ago. Everything we endeavor to do here at Choose Life is to get you, this is, I didn't write any of the Bible. Everybody does know that, don't they? I wrote none of the Bible whatsoever. I'm old, but I'm not that old. I just want you to buy in to what God's made available for you. I mean, every bit of it, from soup to nuts, everything. Everything that belongs to you, health, wealth, peace, joy, all of that belongs to you because of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just like to hound you about it. I just like you to know right now, why in the world would you not move the stuff out of the way that inhibits you from going all out for him? You're not going all out for me. You're going all out for him. You're allowing what he did for you to be so meaningful to you that you will honor him. He's the one that deserves all the honor and all the praise. Hallelujah. Just like, just like PK said, you know, everything that we've ever, ever uh, accomplished, we give him all the glory for it. I mean, sometimes we're, we're you know, fighting all the way <laughs> to try and figure out what we were doing. But the bottom line is, he set this up so we can all do better yes. as individuals and as families, praise God. And I think, about the, I think about the fifth quarter. And I think since I've been here, since I've been here since 1978, uh, on April Fool's Day, I've been here a long time. And you know, I have never seen the things that go on in our city like they are now versus how they were. I mean, like any city with people in it, uh, there are going to be issues every once in a while. But as I look at the issues now and the things that are going on with the young men and women, with the teens and even kids, uh, it really, uh, it really makes, it, makes me realize how uh, critical it is that we do everything we can to get a shot at them. I'm using that term loosely to get an opportunity with them before somebody does get a shot at them. Because those are the kind of days we live in right now. Those are the kind of days we live in. And so anytime you have an opportunity to touch somebody with the gospel, uh, then that's a great investment. That's a great investment. I mean, you just, you don't, uh, you can hardly look at just the front page of our paper. And wasn't it wonderful to see, I don't know, it was uh, uh, yesterday, I guess, where, where we, we saw how great Lee County is doing with its weed sale. <laughs> we are really, we're way up there in counties in, in weed sale. Million and a half or so last month. Come on, some of you, that doesn't surprise you. Some of you have sold weed before, you know. <laughs> you know that it's an easy sale. Huh? People looking for you to buy some weed, huh? But now, I mean, how amazing it is to now be governed by people that see the value in that so it can be, it can actually be legal. But yet on the next page are the people that are arrested for their accidents and they've, they've got their hands on something that's uh, illegal. But all of it is all in the same. It all points to the same thing. D-E-A-T-H. Every bit of it. 
Just think of a state, of a nation, of a county, of a city that would put that in print, how excited we are about the resources that's, that's generated for the state. Hey. That's the way it is today. That's the way it is. But it doesn't have to be that way for us. And it doesn't have to be that way for those that we have an opportunity to touch. And I, I'm excited about PG talking about, uh, about uh, the Holy Ghost, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. A lot of, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of places don't do that. There are, there are a couple of uh, uh, mainline denominations that at one time were very, uh, uh, very uh, boisterous about the Holy Ghost and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. But uh, bless his heart, he lost popularity. He did. The Holy Ghost lost popularity. With, he interfered, actually, with uh, how people really wanted to live and interact. And uh, not to mention the fact there are mainline denominations that, matter of fact, the one I was raised in, and I, I was there, I wouldn't say I did, they did any raising, but uh, they, they even declared that uh, uh, the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues was of the devil. And so, uh, you know, I didn't have anything to go by and I wasn't paying that much attention. So there was much time in my life. Matter of fact, uh, right up until the time that uh, P, PK and I received the Holy Ghost, probably the early part of 79, uh, that's the way we felt. The people that I worked for were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were the ones that influenced us and uh, led us and prayed with us to receive the Holy Ghost. And now churches that once talked about it don't even, they don't even get involved in it. They don't want anybody to know that you pray in tongues because it doesn't make sense. They're so, you know, bound by their intellect, moved by how people think about them. Listen, it wouldn't make any difference if none of the Bible worked. That's what we ought to do. I don't care if they're, if, if they're not even signs following. We ought to be doing what the Word of God says. Why not? Why not? I mean, the Bible says that the ones that are blessed are the doers and not the ones that just hear. So it's important that, that each of us take that, take that seriously, praise God. So as we give tonight, let's just, uh, let's just agree with the Word of God. You just agree with the Word of God. You don't have to agree with me. You just agree with the Word of God. That God is not a man that he should lie. The plan he made is for everyone because he's no respecter of persons. He doesn't care. If you've been broke all your life, you can reverse that curse. Because he wishes and prays above all things that you prosper and that you be in health even as your soul prospers. I don't care what anybody says. God's promises are yes and amen. And that's what you stick with. That's what you stick. If you want those results, then you got to say what God says. Amen. If you need an envelope for cash or check giving, there's one in the seat back in front of you. If you're giving electronically. If you're a guest tonight, you don't have to feel the least bit compelled to give. Or if you've just come in a little bit of time and you're, trying to fi you're still trying to figure out if I belong here. I do belong here. I'm not going anywhere. I can tell you that. My next move is into heaven. And um, the way things look, I'll be able to do that <coughs> alive and well. I believe it's right around the corner and we're on a short block. This is not a New York City block. This is a short block. Amen. New York City, can you imagine what a place to be these days? Huh? Have you ever seen such chaos in your life as is going on? My goodness. How about our governor in, in Texas? I say our governor in Texas because he's got a little sense. 
He's busing, he's busing the immigrants to New York City and drop them, dropping them off in New York. Isn't that hilarious? Of course, the new mayor of New York, he's upset. He's thinking about busing them back. But he can't take care of his own city. The crime, the, it's off the charts. I mean, but that's going to save me money. I won't have to go back to New York. We used to enjoy going to New York. New York is a cool city. Well, let me change that. Was a cool city. Huh? Now, I mean, I don't know of anybody that would want to stand too close to the tracks in the subway. I mean, there's every kind of hater there that you can find. And nobody is the least bit concerned about getting caught anymore, I guess. I encourage you, even though we live in this very mild place called Hobbs, New Mexico, I would realize that the blood of Jesus and the promises of God will protect you and yours. And I would not be the least bit embarrassed if I were you to speak that boldly and confidently as you release your children to go to school, whether it's public school or wherever they go. I would release what belongs to them. And those are angels that are called to protect and to minister to them. I mean, if we're going to spend time learning what the Bible says, then we ought to speak it as if we actually believed it. And pretty soon it'll become a part of you, praise God. Hallelujah. That's what angels are for. They're not fat little babies. Bing! <laughs> that are trying to hook you up with a man or a woman. They are ministering spirits called to minister on behalf of those who are called to be saints. Not ain'ts, but saints. They've got an assignment. They've got an assignment to bring resources, to do what needs to be done, to shake loose the harvest that belongs to you, to do all of the battling for you. And all you have to do is just exercise your faith in what God says, and then what he tells you he'll do his part. Amen? Amen. Father, as we give tonight, we're so grateful that this seed came from you. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof. But you have given man stewardship over everything. So, Father, as we honor you according to your word, thank you that that sets up each and every one of us for a raise. That puts us in a position where it doesn't make any difference. If we've got somebody that's brainless as a president, we still know that we are going to have more than enough. If we have crooked politicians and people in Congress or in the Senate, we know that because of our relationship with you, we need not be concerned about what any of those people do. Thank you, Father, for a harvest on every gift from every giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. That could get me in trouble right there.
victory, all freedom emanates from a relationship with the Father. Because the moment you start, you're in Him. And the moment you start, you are ready to move forward by simply honoring and paying attention to what the Spirit of God tells you. And everybody said, well, how am I going to do that? On purpose. But if we're intentional about wanting our relationship with Him to permeate every area of our life, then it has to be something that you take seriously. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for revelation tonight. Think through my thoughts. Speak through my mouth. Say exactly what needs to be said, Father. Thank you that we all have ears to hear, hearts that are receptive, and minds that are willing to change. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, obviously, the last time we were together has probably been about three Wednesdays ago, I believe. But uh, we, were, we were talking a little bit about, about prayer. How many of you know prayer is a voluminous subject? And how many of you know that uh, uh, most people don't feel very successful uh, as it pertains to their prayer life? I don't know whether you've ever felt like that. Uh, I've, often, I've often wondered just exactly uh, what, uh, what's going wrong because, you know, a lot of people spend a lot of time praying. And you've got prayer groups. You got all kinds of stuff going on, you know? I mean, you're praying for people, but nothing's changing. Has anybody ever noticed that? I mean, we should pay attention to that. We should realize that it really shouldn't be, it, it really shouldn't be fruitless to be people who uh, approach God uh, on behalf of ourselves or on behalf of others and, uh, and not expect to have better results than generally we see take place. Isn't that right? And the reason I believe, very simply, I mean, it's technical if we get into it, but very simply, the problem is uh, the traditions of men have made the Word of God of no effect. There's no power. You can't just pray and fix stuff. I mean, if you could pray and fix stuff, I'm thinking Jesus would have prayed and fixed stuff. Huh? I said, I believe he'd have prayed and fixed stuff. So there's more to it than just knowing the kinds of prayer. There's got to be a reason why the prayers don't clear the ceiling. We know God answers prayer. We know it's His design that we pray. As a matter of fact, the Word says we should pray without ceasing. In other words, we should stay in an attitude of communication with the Father. You've heard me talk along those lines before. Everything really dovetails together. The success of our, uh, of our uh, being connected to the things of God, again, let me just be redundant, is all about our relationship with Him. If it's not a real relationship with Him, you're wasting good oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. The only thing you're doing is creating further global warming with your hot air, <laughs> I guess. Honestly, do you remember that Jesus went to his own own town? And, uh, well, it, isn't that Mary's boy? Aren't these his brothers and sisters over here? And the Bible says that Jesus could do no mighty works because of their unbelief. You know, unbelief on the part of the prayer or on the part of the one being prayed for. You might as well be having a cheeseburger. You might as well be having a cheeseburger. If Jesus couldn't accomplish what he wanted to accomplish. Now he did say, and it says right there in those verses, 
with the exception of he was able to lay his hands on a few people that were sick. And they received their healing. Which really just shows you right there, we ought to all be healed. All the stinking time. I mean, it was just like he probably just went by and, you know, saw him had a runny nose and just went by and touched him and their nose dried up and everything was better, you know. I do believe that there's a place where the Spirit of God gets involved supernaturally that you and I have not a stinking thing to do with. All we are is willing to give him an opportunity to do something supernatural. That would be any time you'd see in the Word of God where it, it, it'll make a statement like, as the Spirit wills. We know it's His will that you live and not die. We know it's His will that you prosper. We know it's His will that you live in peace. We know those things. We know it's His will that you be whole, that you be healthy. Amen. Those things are not things that we should even question. But yet today, even church people, we take those to prayer. We take that we're going to pray for this, we're going to pray for that. We're praying for something that already belongs to us. We're waiting until we've got a stinking issue that we shouldn't even be dealing with because it belongs to us in redemption. It belongs to us as the children of God. It's part of the salvation package. But if you don't continue to badger people with that and make it clear to them that they have to work that out personally, then they'll hang on until all hell breaks loose and expect somebody to pray them out of trouble or pray themselves out of trouble when that's never been God's design. God's design is we get built up on the Word of God and we fight tooth and nail anything that comes against us that we know Jesus has already paid for. He, but most people, you know, we're lazy. Just lazy. There's no pressure right now. Everything's pretty good. We're making more than we've ever made, huh? We've even got money left sometimes at the end of the month, you know? And so we're just, we're just moving right along. God's good, you know, everything's good, praise God. But we're not realizing that our focus needs to be on what he's done for us and allowing that to become real to us. Hallelujah. I'm not expecting the enemy to sneak up on me. I know what he does to people or endeavors to do to people when they get older. Huh? I know what he tries to do. But I also know those same Christian people that if you were listening to them sometime other than the two hours that they're in church, they'll sit around and talk about their issues. Yeah, uh uh-oh is right. (laughs) I mean, we got them issues down. We know the commercial. huh? We can almost pronounce the the prescription. (laughs) We don't even care what's in it. We just want some relief. Huh? (laughs) And we can do that. We can go. We can get us a prescription filled and take care of business. Instead of Realizing that the book is full of prescriptions that have already been paid for and sealed with the blood of Jesus. We've got exceeding precious promises from him. That honestly, the world can't rival. And they don't cost a red cent. They cost nothing. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. 
for all the promises of God in him, in him, we've been talking overall about in him realities, for all the promises of God in him, hallelujah, praise God, Come on, you don't have to be you don't have to be a theologian, huh? All you got to do is be able to focus on 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 a verse and take it for what it's worth. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know you can take the Bible literally. Yes. If you're sitting here and you've received the Lord Jesus as your savior by believing in your heart that he went to the cross for you, was crucified for you, and was raised from the dead in three days, and you've received him as your Savior and Lord, then you're, you're taking the Bible literally, aren't you? You're taking the Bible literally. Well, you can take the Bible literally. The promises are literally promises that have been made for you and I as God's kids. Again, how big do you see God? I talk about this a lot for crying out loud. I mean, if God was willing, if God was willing to put everything on his son, doesn't it make sense to you that he wants nothing on you but the success that his son has already sacrificed his life for? That keeping you whole, keeping you prosperous, to keeping you at peace is cake because of what Jesus has already done. For all the promises of God. All the promises. All the promises. Not all the promises if it's a certain disease. Or a certain issue. All the promises of God in him, in Christ Jesus, are yes and amen. They're yes and amen. So let me ask you a question. What's going to happen then? You know what's going to happen with these people? These people that and uh, and you know I don't want to get I don't want to upset anybody because I don't talk about this a lot because it's you know it's obvious, it's obvious that that we don't understand that prayer is not just something that you can do without having done what you need to do to be in a position to not only pray but to receive what belongs to you when you do pray. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> well, it's a good word. How are you going to miss being? You can't not be a good preacher if you preach the word. I mean, it's just an automatic, praise God. Of course, that's, that's something that a lot are not willing to do. All the promises. But you can't, you can't see that verse and amen, glory to God. Oh, I'm so glad he said that tonight. And then the next time you're in a circle with somebody, huh? And, and, and some pain or some stuff comes up. Well, I, you know, I know that's what the Bible says, but. Your but. Just negated. Anything you've said. There has to be an outright atomacy about what you believe. And if somebody tries to add something to it, say, mi mano, just talk to the hand. Because I'm fixing to turn and walk away. You either believe it or you don't. Let's just be sure we understand something tonight. Most people generally speaking, are unbelieving believers. When what they can see, feel, touch, or smell lines up with the Word of God, they're faith people. But if anything deviates from that, then they slip over into the flesh mode, which assures them one day soon to end up in the co-mode. If they're yes and amen, there's no what ifs and buts. So what are we shooting for? We're shooting for yes and amen. We're shooting for a place personally 
where we have this over-the-top confidence that God's Word is God's Word. And because we have spent enough time with Him, we trust Him. And we refuse to get our mouth out of line with His Word. Now, do most Christians do that? Please. That would be a major no. That would be a major no. But that's still what we should be shooting for. Everybody wants to have a good life. Everybody wants to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. That's what God wants for people too. Third John 2. Beloved, I wish or pray above all things that you prosper and that you be in health even as your soul prospers. See your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. You've got to work on them constantly. When you hear the Word of God, your heart gets supercharged with it. Your heart's not the problem. Your soul is the issue. And if you allow your soul to control, it will kick your butt. It will turn you every way but loose. If you get in the feelings realm, the enemy who's been smoked, huh? He had his rear kicked. His authority to do anything to you has been stripped of him. But if you open the door for him and don't treat him as he needs to be treated, he'll be all over you like white on rice. Huh? He will turn you every way but loose. You get in the emotional realm, you're done. I said you're done. Without qualification, you get in the emotional realm as it pertains to anything that belongs to you. If you get in the emotional realm, he will kick your butt. And he'll have people on assignment to come around and help him kick your butt. Because he don't show up. He shows up in people or situations or circumstances. People that are marginal believers at best will tell you how foolish you are. That's ridiculous for you to believe the Word of God. That's foolish for you to think that you can take the Word of God literally. How do you take your salvation if you don't take it literally? You've got to explain that to me, somebody. Or one of these nut jobs that wants to talk about, you can't, you can't take it literally. You can't take that literally. Jesus took it literally. Yeah, that's right. that's exactly he took everything that was wrong literally Amen. in his body and on his body so that we could literally be free from those things if we actually believed the word. Hallelujah. We're not preaching some milk toast message, some watered down, dribbling, half lemonade and half urine. Even though the colors blend, the taste has come to an end. And honestly, the, the thing that, that I believe I need to encourage you with the most is what do each one of you want to do with that as an individual? Because ain't nobody can do it for you. Hmm? Nobody can pray you out of your laziness or your unbelief when everything hits the fan. Are you listening to me? Huh? There's no miracle dust that can fix your unwillingness 
to have actually been involved with a relationship with God. I'm just trying to help us add days and benefits to every area of our life. I don't want to depend on somebody else. I don't. I mean, there's a lot of people I love. I love my, my, my wife. I love my children. I, I, I love many of you. Some of you I'm not sure of yet. but I mean, I love you with the, the general love of God, agape. But, but I mean, as far as, you know, really chum buddy and with, you know, I'm not, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure I'm ready for that yet. But God's never, God never called you to be, you know, to be dependent on an eight pack of friends or relatives if something happens. He wants you and he to be tight. He wants you to know like Paul knew, I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I've committed unto him against the day that I see him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But you know, you can't just run around and be pretty. Huh? Or all muscular like myself and Elijah. That just don't happen. I told you there was one time I bought a year's membership at the gym. I went three times the first month. I was done. Huh? I realized I do not have a commitment to my muscles. The guy that owned the gym, he said, oh, you want to pay for a full year in advance? Yeah. I said, I'm making a commitment here. My money was making a commitment. God loves you. You know, John 17, 23, we talk about it. He loves you as much as he loves Jesus. So when he sees you, he sees one who has received what his son did. And because he loves you, he's made a way for you to enjoy everything his son did. I don't want to count on somebody else when he's given me the power. He's given me an opportunity to have a relationship with him that says I can count on him. Yes, yes, amen. But you know, today people feel good. We'll just get a group. We're just going to do this. It's, we're going to fix this. Bull crap. Yeah, come on, come on. You don't want to be and you don't have to be an occasional miracle. When you've got promises that don't require a miracle. They don't require a miracle. I said, they don't require a miracle. You don't need a miracle to be healed. You don't need a miracle to be prosperous. You don't need a miracle to live at peace. Those things have already been available to each and every one of us. There are things that we do to walk in those promises that are yes and amen. And that's not pray for them. They're yours. They're yours. I said they're yours. They're already yours. Isn't that what that verse says? Every promise in him is yes and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just all about what you want. What you're hungry for. And again, we've, we've been set up as a, uh, as, a, as a lazy people in a lazy nation. We've been raised that we avoid anything whatsoever that requires any additional effort or work. Isn't that right? We take what we believe is the course 
of least resistance. But the fact is, it's going to bring the most difficulty. Why do we think, why do we think that, that, that Christians don't enjoy, percentage-wise, the success that many people in the world? And, of course, their success is short-term. There's no question about that. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying we ought to have them all. Everything that he paid for, we ought to be able to have every bit of it. There's no, no reason why we shouldn't. There's no, there's no way that uh, we can be kept from it if we make a determination that that's what we want. Well, what does it take? It just takes a willingness to do our part. To do our part. What would a long life of health be worth? What would a, uh, what would a long life of, of, worth, of, of health be worth? What would that be worth to somebody? I mean, anybody that spent any time in the emergency room or in the doctor's office waiting for them to see you. Because God knows your time's not as important as theirs, so you just sit there. You just sit there and suffer until they can get you in there. Isn't that right? I mean, and if they're super busy, you know, they're just going to have to, they're just going to have to soothe you with some words or whatever. I mean, they've only, only got so much room. Now, they're making a lot of money. But they're not making money off an empty building. They're making money off of people that don't know what you and I should know. Amen. And I'm not talking, I'm not talking about your genes or your DNA. I'm not talking about how healthy your family is or how unhealthy your family is. I'm talking about how unhealthy it is for us not to realize how healthy the Word of God is in its ability to fill us with everything that belongs to us. Amen. How many in here enjoy going to the doctor? I will get no hands, even if you, you know. Nobody enjoys that. Nobody enjoys even making the appointment. Nobody enjoys the drive out there. Nobody sits like sitting in the waiting room. And then going on, going on and then they ask you what's wrong. I mean, you just give them a little, you just give them a little hint. Well, you know, uh, I just, you know, I just heard all over more than anywhere else. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I just heard all over more than anywhere else. Man, you've given them all they need right there. They're going to practice on you. They're going to practice on you. That's why they call them practicing physicians. Now, you probably think that I, I don't like doctors. I have nothing against doctors whatsoever. But that doesn't mean that I want to take advantage of what they do. I want to take advantage of what Jesus did. Jesus paid it all. I believe that it's all to him that I owe. Sin and all of my nastiness had left a major stain. But he was willing to wash me white as snow. And in that washing, he has given me access to a clean, whole, prosperous life. And it begins in my mouth. It begins in my mouth, putting the word in my heart and then actually speaking it until it becomes a part of every fiber of my being and actually believing that the word of God as the word of God says is health and medicine to all our flesh. That's what it says of itself. That it is health and medicine. And we have 
a spirit who lives within us who will help us do the things that we need to do naturally. Now, you don't have to be sleek and racy to live in divine health. But the best way to be is the way you should be for your body. You should be willing to do what needs to be done naturally. Not counting on that totally. But I'm going to tell you, you're not going to have the faith and the confidence that you need if something comes against you. If you know you are not doing what you know to do, okay? I, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not putting everything on diet. I've known a lot of skinny people that didn't make it very long in life. They look sleek and racy and everything looks wonderful. And then I've seen people, you know, my mom or my dad would say this about them. My mom and dad were both mean people. I had never thought about that. I said, look at them. They're as big as the side of a barn. And I go, ooh, ooh, that sounds like that would hurt their feelings, you know. But we've been given exceeding precious promises. How are you going to pray for somebody that don't even take care of themselves? I'm just saying. How are you going to pray for somebody? First of all, not just to take care of themselves. How are you going to pray for somebody that doesn't even put the hearing of the Word of God in a place of prominence in their life? In other words, they don't understand that just the Word of God, hearing the Word of God, is health and medicine. You know, you got to get out of your, you, you got to get out of your um, skepticism. Some people are highly develop, developed in skepticism. I don't know why somebody that spends any time in church would be skeptical. We're not preaching our own doctrine. We're preaching what the Word says. Well, but I know so and so. They were a dear saint, and you know, they, it was horrible for them, and they died. So what people been dying since people have been being born yeah. <laughs> amen yeah. amen somebody wants some soft oh, oh no. come on what is important to you and really it all comes back to one thing honoring god yeah. It just comes back to honoring God. Do I want to do what he's asked me to do so that I can be someone whose life brings glory to him by actually applying the word to my life? Am I willing to do that and fade all of the mocking and all the ridicule? And it's going to come, that comes from fellow believers. The world don't care nothing about you. They're not saying anything about it. You're not on their radar. Yeah. You know, it's just like, you know, people like us were not on Obama's radar. <laughs> yeah. What did he say? We were, we were those people, we just needed a crutch. Christians, those people just need a crutch. I got your crutch. <laughs> I'll work you over with this crutch. <laughs> I take care of any opportunity where you would ever need hemorrhoids. I would fix you with this crutch. The Word of God is not a crutch for a bunch of weak people who are not intelligent enough to know how things are supposed to be. You don't have to be educated beyond your intelligence. All you have to be is in love with the one who paid for you to have this abundant life and then be willing to do your part. If that means quit something, then you quit it. If that means make some adjustments, then you make some adjustments. Huh? 
You're not concerned about what somebody else thinks. You're not concerned about them making fun of you. Say, hey, listen. Hey, listen. You know, just like they told us when we were raising the girls. You know, you're too hard on the girls. And blah, 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 blah. And you just wait till they're teenagers. I said, you wait. You wait till they're teenagers. You hide and watch. The Word of God works. Huh? The Word of God works. And my almost 77-year-old carcass is still moving around pretty stinking good. And I haven't, had, I haven't had to put any medication in it in order for it to be able to function. Now, there are things that I, I don't do, and I don't do them because I didn't go that full year <laughs> to the gym. Let, you know, just left me a little flabby around the edges, you know. But don't be hating on me. Age has its privileges. Huh? I can be a little flabby around the edges, but I'm working on that too. But the bottom line is, this life and prosperity and peace and joy and all of these things, why in the world would we not want to take advantage of those things? Jesus paid for us to be able to do that. Hallelujah. To be happy, to be joyful in the midst of a storm. When everybody else is fallen, you're standing strong. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When everybody else is going under, you're going over. Because that's what Jesus paid for. What are, I mean, even in the Old Covenant, I'll make you the head and not the tail. I'll put you above on and not beneath. You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the field. Everything you put your hand to will prosper. Hallelujah. And all of that begins when you begin to believe that that can be that way. Hallelujah. You know, begin to be Word of God inside minded because it has to be in you in order to be worked out from you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't want you to pray for me. I don't want you to pray for me. I don't want you to feel like you have to. What are you going to pray for me? Oh, Lord, I, I hope he's okay, Lord. Well, I hope he makes it. Well, what if I don't want to make it? What if I'm ready to go? Oh, it's just going to be so bad when you're gone. Oh, don't give me that. Not to mention the fact, if you get yourself with that kind of attitude and you lose a loved one, you're lost also. Of course, there are tragedies, things that happen. But you're still here. God is a God of the living. Yes. The one that passed, if they were in him, they're living. Yes. They're not the least bit concerned about your emotional state right now. And you shouldn't either. People just use that as a way of escape. Well, this happened and that happened. I've had a tragic life. A lot of people have had tragic events in their life. No question about it. Huh? Everybody has to one degree or another. And some things are heinous and tragic. No question about it. I thank God that all of mine were self-induced. So I've got really nobody to blame or be emotional about. I just look in the mirror and say, get over it, boy. But you're here to live. You're here to live. You're here to bring glory to God. Hallelujah. Their promises. That means they're good. And they're designed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Don't pray for me. I mean, don't pray for me. I mean, don't pray for me. 
I mean, what, what would you pray for me? I can, you can pray that the eyes of my understanding will continue to be enlightened. That I'll understand and continue to understand the hope of my calling. But you know, to expect somebody else to pray you into a better place or light a candle to get you in a better place without a Bible promise on that. I don't know what that costs, but it doesn't pay dividends. The only thing that pays dividends is being a doer of the Word. A doer. Say, I'm a doer. doer. That's one word. I'm a doer. (laughs) Not, I'm a doer. It's, I'm a doer. doer. I'm a doer. doer. Say, "I'm I'm a doer. And because I'm a doer, I'm a blessed. That's right. Amen. I'm a doer, sir. I'm a blessed. Coming in and going out. Everything they do prospers. I don't want to hear all that mess about, well, you know, sometimes you just have to yeah, there's sometimes you have to do a lot of things that you wouldn't have to do if you'd have done what you're supposed to do. Hmm? You know, if a frog had wings, he wouldn't bump his butt every time he jumped. <laughs> they drug that right, they drag that rear end every time they get ready to take off. If they had wings, they wouldn't do that. They'd be able to just lift off, you know. Praise God. I want to do better. I do. I want to do better. I'm really endeavoring to be harder on myself. I used to say I want to be hard on me and easy on you. But now I enjoy the company. So those that stick around, I want to be hard on you. Because I know if you're not hard on you, there'll come a time that you wish you were. If you're not serious about what you know to be serious about, there'll come a time that you will be. And uh, um, that'll be one of those deals where it's T-O-O-L-A-T-E. Is that the the right place for a T-O-O as opposed to just a T-O? It is? I didn't do good in English because they sat too far away from me to be able to see everything I needed when I was doing the test. <laughs> Pastor, you were a cheater? I cheated some in school. I cheated some in school. I know none of you had. I mean, it's easy to tell that... that <laughs> that I'm with a group of people here that were as pure as the undriven snow. Huh? And then some of you that have just had trouble with habitual lying. You know, those promises will get you everything that you would ever need. Everything. A good relationship or relationships. Understanding, direction with your children, with a spouse, with a business, with an employment skill. Everything. God's interested in everything and Jesus paid for everything. He left nothing undone. He touched every base. He was ready for even the most focused believer for them to go as far as he wanted them to go. And he's no respecter of persons. I encourage us not to get bogged down in endeavoring to figure out naturally 
how things will do better or increase. Focus on your relationship with trusting and believing Him. And He will add to you the things that need to be added to you. Quit trying to figure out how things are going to look down the road. He'll take care of down the road. He'll take care of down the road. You focus on now, and he'll be working on then. And when you get to then, the now you get to will be a great place to be. But if you try and do then now, hmm, you'll never get there. Amen. I got to quit. I got to quit. Is anybody in here that doesn't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus? That isn't born again? I feel like I can just ask you that because it's just really a, a question like any other question. It'd be like asking you. If you're a woman, it'd be just like asking you, are you pregnant? And you know, pregnant, you either are or you aren't. There's no such thing as maybe. You know you are. Does everybody in here know that they're a child of God? That if something were to transpire tonight and you'd take your last breath, you'd end up in His presence? Does everybody know that? I'm serious. I'm serious. Because a lot of that stuff happens anymore and people don't expect it. People just don't expect it. And there are a lot of friends like you and I that say, golly, I wonder what happened. Doesn't make a difference what happened. What makes a difference is what happens before that happens. Like Paul said, and I said already, you need to know in whom you have believed. And you need to be firmly persuaded that he's able to keep what you've committed to him. What have you committed to him? Your life. He gave his life for you. We commit our life to him. And the more serious, serious we are about that commitment, the more of his life we enjoy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's all stand at our feet. Those of you that are watching online, uh, I'm sure that there are some of you that have never personally received the Lord Jesus. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pray. I just expect you to pray after me. You just need to be sincere. If you're sincere with God, He'll be sincere with you. And it's actually very simple to become a child of God. The most challenging part usually is a person deferring to, being willing to humble themselves and receive what they know they need. Many people, many people don't receive him until they, they hit bottom. But you don't have to hit bottom to become a child of God. It's, chi it's, it's God's design uh, that a person be born again, that a young boy, that a young girl be born again and never even know what the bottom looks like. Praise God. That is His plan. So if you're watching tonight and you've never personally received the Lord Jesus, I simply want you to pray this after me. And that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to become a child of God. You're going to be brought out of spiritual darkness into spiritual light. Just say this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to this earth to live a perfect, sinless life so that I could be your child. Thank you, Father, for allowing Jesus to do what only he could do, paying a price that I owed so that I could be your child. Thank you, Jesus. I receive you tonight as my Savior and my Lord. 
And I thank you, Father, that you have forgiven me and you have received me based on what Jesus has done for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, I want you to click on the description below, and I want you to uh, get a hold of us. We've got some information for you. We've got some resources for you, and I'm going to encourage you to come to the very next service that you can come to. Come to one of our services on Sunday. I would love to. I would be honored to meet you when you come. It's important that you get connected with a church that believes the truth, a, a church that will. You know, I've heard people say, you just pay attention now. Uh, I've heard people say before, well, you know, it doesn't make any difference as long as they go to church. Let me just tell you something. It makes a huge difference where you go to church. What you need to what you need to do is you need to find a church. You wouldn't have to look very far if you're serious. You need to find a church that loves you enough to tell you the truth. Because honestly, the only thing that will set you and keep you free is you embracing the truth of God's Word. This is a place that will do that. We've got great men and women, men and women that are hungry and thirsty for the things of God, men and women that I can assure you, those that I know and have seen for a season, I can tell you they're doing better than they've ever done. But you know what? None of us are finished, including myself. So I can assure you this would be a great place for you to get connected, glory to God. So be sure and come. You're now a child of God. The Bible says that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, which means when the Lord Jesus returns for his bride, for the church, you will be a part of that group. Praise God. Hallelujah. I love you guys a bunch. Don't forget uh, uh, late night tonight uh, with Pastor Greg. And uh, that's going to be a great time, of course. Uh, I, I don't know. I didn't hear anything. Was there a food truck here or anything tonight going on from a food perspective? I mean, I heard some stomachs growling. I didn't know if, I didn't know. Maybe that was mine. I don't know. No food. I mean, you know. And some of you say, I'll be okay. That's exactly right. We'll be okay with it. We, we can miss a meal or two. I love you guys a bunch. Don't forget or nights if you can make it tomorrow night. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, Sunday. Amen. Love you. Have a blessed night. Be wise in your driving.